Well, hello, family, and welcome back to my channel. I am your girl, Tierra Griffin, and I'm here to help you create the life that you love while remaining totally submitted unto Jesus Christ. Today, we're going to be talking about a very interesting topic, one that I find very dear to my heart and one that I had to really come to grips with, right? So we're going to be talking about Christians who be power tripping with Ratchet TV. Yes, you heard me. Sit back, relax, get comfortable, and let me take you on this power trip. Let's go. So, let's talk about this, okay? So, Power is a show with Omari Hardrick, um, the girl from 3LW, The Turn. I don't know. I don't know all their names, but it's a show about like hustling, drug dealing, um, adultery uh gang banging territories and all that like the storyline is amazing like whoever wrote that they have a really great storyline and they really know how to keep you engaged in the show um but i just can remember watching it i would feel so bad after it went off because i would try to like spend time with god after i watched power but it it I had to repent for a good 30 45 minutes because i just felt so bad and then i realized that it wasn't true repentance because when you repent for something you're supposed to turn away from i just was simply confessing my sins and confessing that i felt bad for watching it but i wasn't really doing anything about it so it just i started getting uncomfortable watching these shows but my friends would tell me like Terry, you need to stop watching power and i'd be like ain't nothing wrong with power power is great all those yeah i'm repenting after i watch it but i didn't want nobody to tell me that i couldn't watch power no more because i loved it i love power so much that i would send the kids out my nieces and nephew if they were here you need to go do something you need to go do something else with your life because you cannot sit in here with me while i'm watching power because you can't take this in to your your little baby spirit as if i could handle it any better but we'll save that for another part of this video so i would wait till 12 a.m on demand for power and i would watch it sunday morning i didn't want to wait till sunday night at nine or ten o'clock whenever it came on i had to watch top power at 12 a.m on demand and i would just sit there and become so indulged in the show that Nothing else mattered. My phone didn't matter. Nothing else in my life mattered while Power was on. There was no commercials either, so we could just watch it straight, <laughs> straight through. And um, I remember, um, I'll tell you this. So I had a dream about Power because you know that spirits are transferable. So that means that they can transfer, transfer through tv they can transfer from another person they can transfer from atmospheres they can transfer from churches businesses what you eat like spirits are transferable and when you're watching certain types of television shows which we're talking about tv today and you have an open wound or an open door in your life that spirit has full access to you it has full access to you it doesn't have to ask you to come in it just comes in because it has legal rights to be there and i was um I had a dream one night that I was in this hotel watching power and um the kids there was kids in the hotel room with me they were on the bed but they were on the bed and then one of the men I don't know what I can't remember which one came out of the TV in the dream and started having sex with me on the floor and I was telling him to be quiet and not make too much noise because I don't want the kids on the bed to see what we were doing on the floor um and then i don't know the kids disappeared i don't know what happened to the kids but um we were you know we were having sex and he stopped and when he got up there was something black leaking from his genitalia and i looked at him and i was like what is that like do you have aids or like what is going on with your stuff it's like it's bleeding black or it's leaking something black and um he went in the bathroom to check and um he was like ain't nothing wrong with me blah 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 and he came back he was like oh but you still gonna sleep with me you still gonna have sex with me and i was like no 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 not today buddy and i ran out of that hotel literally for my life and he didn't he didn't chase me because i think context of the dream i think that he didn't know that i knew how to get out i don't think that he knew that while he wasn't there in other times 
that I knew how to get out. Like I knew the escape. So when I ran out, I didn't run the way that he thought I was going to run, which was going to be a place where I would have, probably would have gotten lost in the woods. I actually ran the other way because like I said, I've ran this way before and I ran to a friend and she was able to help me. And basically I believe that that dream was signifying that in that room I was in bondage and he was trying to force me to still sleep with him after I saw something was wrong with him. He was trying to force me to sleep with him when I saw something leaking from his genitalia. If I wouldn't do that in the natural world, I dang sure need to be careful, like, you know, like over my spirit, but I'm, and if I wouldn't do it in the spirit, I definitely wouldn't do it in natural. You get my point. So I, I was like, um, I'm not sleeping with you. Like he was trying to force me. And before I ran out the door, he did try to like hold me down. And I was like, no. And it's funny because I have a, like a real life testimony when, um, not a guy was leaking from his genitalia, but, um, being able to escape. And I've escaped before and I think that it was trying to, the dream was trying to signify me running away from lust or running away from perversion. It signifies me running away from a situation where somebody could have given me something. And I can see it. It's not that this was hidden. Like he was, what was coming out of him could have contaminated me. Could have even killed me or caused my body to shut down or become sick and I ran away from it. What was also very um, interesting about this dream was we were trying to get the kids to be quiet but he came from the television. So that's like a spirit coming from this and then trying to sleep with me. Because my, my question is to believers, how can you watch a television show like this and you have an open door? And you may be saying, I don't got no open doors to your, yes you do. If you've ever had premarital sex, you have the open door of lust. And how can you expect to be free from something that you keep before you? How can you expect to be freed from lust when you're watching a television show that has explicit pornographic sex scenes in it? Right? So, because isn't it funny how we will continue to see that there's something wrong with this thing and it's telling me, oh, there's nothing wrong with me to get me to still sleep with it knowing that either it's intentionally trying to contaminate me, intentionally trying to get me sick, intentionally trying to kill me, or if it's unintentionally because it just wants to do what it wants to do. And I see something wrong. I see that there's something wrong with you, but sometimes we can become so set in our ways that I'm going to do what I want to do and, and, and then lead us into becoming contaminated with this thing that we can definitely see that there's something wrong with. Not only that, in the dream, I believe that another spiritual revelation that I got from it is this thing has something wrong with it. And then I would have slept with you, continue to sleep with it, or say for instance, okay, I decided to, to go forward and sleep with this thing, continue to watch this show. And whatever was in it would have gotten into me that would have caused me to be spiritually sick. I would have got a spiritually transmitted disease, an STD, that would have affected my system. What it does is make you not immune to stuff so you get sick from even the common cold so much to the point that you can die. But you wanted to kill my immune system. You wanted to kill my sensitivity. You wanted to kill what I was, where I was going in God by giving me disease or causing me spiritual death. So if I would have continued to watch the show, if I would have continued and been like, I'm gonna do what I wanna do and then slept with this thing, think about what my life would have been like. If this had been a real situation or just watching the TV show, I really believe for me, this is what I'm telling you for me, you can take it or not, but I'm saying for me, if I would have watched that show and continued on that pattern, and seeing that there is something clearly wrong with you, you're leaking black from your genitalia, meaning, you know what I'm saying? And I slept with it because I wanted to, how that would have affected me. How that would have affected my life going forward. How it would have affected, now that I'm healthy right now, then one day look up like, dang, now I gotta go through all of this to get back to where I was when I can just stop it now before we even get into it by recognizing that there's something wrong right. with you. So, um, that was, I, after that dream, I was like, okay, God, I know for sure. Because God didn't say, Tierra, stop watching this TV show. It was just like my conviction level. And another, something else I want to share with you is before, um, before I started having these conviction feelings, I started praying to God and I asked God to bring me closer to him. I asked God to, um, 
I wanted to be close to him. I wanted to, I wanted to have a deeper relationship with him. I wanted more of him. I wanted more of his presence. And when I prayed that, that's when I started becoming overly convicted because I was already kind of convicted, but I became overly convicted. And I visited this church and I asked the young lady because she's, you know, highly prophetic and, um, I have a prophetic gift and I was asking her like how do you see into the spirit room like how do you um how are you going this deep how are you so accurate like I've been trying to develop you know this gift that's on the inside of me and she said one thing that blew my mind she said I stopped living casually and I was like what do you mean by you stop living casually she said I stopped doing what everybody in the world was doing I stopped doing what society told me I should do I I I couldn't hang out with my friends. Like, basically, when God has consecrated you, you can't do what everybody else is doing. Like, even if it's good things, everything that's good ain't God. She said, I stopped hanging around, spending so much time with my friends. I started getting into the word of God. I stopped watching certain things. I stopped listening to certain things. My life could no longer be casual. Basically, she became so intentional about her walk and her life that she cut off everything that couldn't work. And I was like, that's funny because... I'm having these dreams and this heavy conviction about what I'm watching on television. And I believe that is a result of my prayer. I asked God for more of him. So if I'm asking God for more of him, he can't fit in where I, in, in the container that I'm trying to put him in. If I want more of him, what I have, one, I'm not a good student over what I have right now. And then two, there are things that are in where I'm trying to put God. There are things in the way that he can't fill it the way that he wants to fill it because there's something taking up that space. Like if there was like a, a, a glass cylinder jar, if I fill it with water and there's nothing else in it, that's all filled. But if there's stuff inside, like say I had some blocks inside of the water cylinder jar, I had some marbles and different things like that, the amount of water that could have fit in there when it was empty is not the same amount of water that can fit in it now. So God is like, you're asking for me to pour out upon you and you're asking for more, but there's not much room for me to get into here. Like we already have our water cylinder jars. Say this is the jar. We already have it filled up to here and we're wanting God to, to fill up. And he's just like, you're asking for more of me, but there's no room for me. So God has to move those things out of you. And why I said Christians be power tripping because we seriously watch these shows and we're condoning the things on these TV shows when we went condone them in our regular friendships. If there was any one of my friends, I have a friends that are married. If one of my friends who was married, her and her husband weren't getting along and she was like, I'm about to go out here and sleep with this man. No, you cannot do that. Like, I'm going to encourage you to do right by your marriage. But, you know, I wouldn't condone that. I wouldn't condone my friends sleeping around with guys and they're unmarried. I wouldn't condone that. I wouldn't condone murder. I wouldn't condone. And I'm sitting there watching these shows like, you better... Because Angela ain't no good. And I ain't telling him to go back to 3LW, girl. I'm telling him to live his best life. Shoot. Come here if you want to. You know what I'm saying? Like, I started to condone the things I was seeing on TV. And I wouldn't condone them in my personal life. So, if I, and if I know that they're wrong for a believer, why am I sitting there watching it as if everything's okay? No, it's not just a TV show because I said that spirits are transferable. And like I said, I stopped watching Ratchet TV because it just, it was just irritating. I, I couldn't take it no more. But that was like a year or so ago. But it's funny because once I pray for God, more of you power had to go and another thing apostle stevenson said why should i have to wait for god to tell me that something is wrong if i even feel or if i'm even convinced that what i'm doing does not please god i'm cutting it off period that's how i protect my walk is how i protect my faith is how i protect my relationship with god he don't got to tell me daughter that's wrong if i even feel like i'm hurting you that's it i'm cutting it off i'm letting it go like period point dot blank and I felt like it was convicting God I couldn't watch it with the Holy Spirit like I pretty much was telling the Holy Spirit close your eyes you can't watch this or I'm gonna put you know God on the shelf until I'm done and when I'm done watching when I want to watch it then I'm gonna bring him back down no he wasn't pleased I felt him grieving I'm very sensitive to the Holy Spirit and I felt him grieving but I wanted to watch my show I wanted to satisfy my flesh 
So like I said, I will let go of anything because nothing is as important to me as the presence of God. There's nothing that is as important to me than the presence of God, than the, the power of God, the glory of God in my life. Like I want him around, like he is my best friend and I never will want to hurt him. And if I don't want to hurt like my natural friends, if I know that my best friend may not be comfortable with a certain situation, I'm not going to keep doing it to her because I love her. But why when it comes to the Holy Spirit that we can't really see that we treat him any differently, but we say we love him. So we got to stop power tripping, thinking that we're strong, thinking that we can do whatever we want. Um, we can say whatever we want. We can watch whatever we want. No, I'm good. No, because it may not show up today, but it's slowly seeping into your subconscious. And then on another note, whatever you allow in your heart or whatever begins to rule over you. And when I was watching Ratchet TV, and this is a powerful sermon by Michael Todd that he's talking about right now at Transformation Church, he's saying how when we have things on our heart, it controls different functions of our heart, like our intelligence, our conscience, our will, our thoughts, our emotions, and our feelings. And um, I can't remember the, our intellect. So if I have love and hip hop on my heart, now when a girl pisses me off or says something to me, my emotional response is going to be from what love and hip hop would do. Now my will on how I'm going to react to it will become what love and hip hop would do. Now my thoughts are what love and hip hop would do because I love Tommy. And you can start seeing yourself acting like these women that you're feeding yourself on. You find yourself acting like the women on power, you know, like Angela, like sleeping with this man, although you know he's married, but it's okay because you're watching it, right? So you have to watch what is on the throne of your heart. And when I put the Holy Spirit on my heart, now I can't watch certain things. Now I get super sensitive when I'm spending time with God. And this is how you know. I'm, I hope I'm not all over the place. It's still in the same vein. I may have to break this stuff down to you um, at a later date if you ask any questions. But with the, when I start spending time with the Holy Spirit and I'm like spending a lot of time with him, yeah, I can't run a red light. I, I follow the laws of the land. And it's, it's because I recognize his presence and I recognize that he's right there with me. So when I'm, when I, when I'm living like he's right here with me, I don't do anything to grieve him. I don't want certain things that I want to grieve him. I want him to be happy. I want my life to be pleasing in God's sight. And that is true worship. Worship isn't just on Sundays when you lift up your hands because they're singing a slow song. Worship is no God. I want to honor you every day of my life, Monday through Sunday. God, right here, right now, I recognize that your presence is here. And if I don't want to grieve you, if I wouldn't do it in front of my grandmother, I definitely won't do it with the Holy Spirit, right? So, we as believers have to stop power tripping with Ratchet TV and really get serious about the things of God because you can have an amazing life and be submitted to Christ. And it'll be so I pray that that video helped you. I pray that that was touched you or resonated with you in some way, shape or form because it really did with me. Um, um, let's see. It really did with me. Um, so I don't watch power. I literally cut it off <laughs> three episodes before the ending and, um, that was hard because I'm nosy too. I wanted to know what happened at the end. But like I said, there's no, and I can't wait till I get to the end. How much time am I on? Oh man, I can't wait till I get to the end to be like, um, oh, I'm not watching it no more. God, no, I'm going to make this sacrifice and kill my flesh. So I haven't watched Power the last three episodes. I don't know what happened. Um, I wanted to know, but like I said, I love God more. Um, can't be casual when you want to go deeper in the things of God, when you see, want to see more of God, when you want to be in his presence more and different things like that. You got to cut some things off and you can't live casual. You have to definitely be consecrated to God. So, yep, 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 yep. I think that's all. That's all. So stay tuned for more videos. Make sure that you go into the comment section below and let me know if you had any questions on this videos and any other ideas that you may have for me to do more videos. Uh, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right. So don't leave here, sister, brother. Don't leave here without subscribing. Okay. And make sure that you follow me on social media right here. Follow me on social media now, because what else are you doing? Follow me on social media, um, Facebook and Instagram at Tierra Griffin. And yeah, I hope you liked this video because I did. And I know that your life's going to completely change. And if you want to see God move like never before, stop making sacrifices to him 
and make room so that he can fill you up. Love you guys. Bye.